deposits, cancellation policy. These are things you really need to understand in the salon, especially today. We're gonna talk about this right now on the Biz Talk. Trace, I have to make this comment. Okay, before we get started, I always have a comment, but look at my socks today. I made a comment before on a previous episode. These are Chewbacca socks. Okay, from here, uh -huh. they look like poo. <laughs> but I did know what it was because yeah. you've worn them before. But right. from here, so, so just what, poo. <laughs> so what you're saying is the average person will be like, why is that dude wearing poo socks? It's either chocolate chips or poo. <laughs> okay. They're Chewbacca, now damn you know, it. Now you know. I'm going to, every You're person. You have to wear them like this so we can see. See it? Wear them on the outside of my pants? Yes. Okay. I'm going to. Bring that. Bring that back. Was that ever in? It was. Was remember, it really? Like, remember when you, like, uh, no. peg leg uh, your pants and then peg wear. Peg leg your pants. Does anybody pirate? else know about that? Like, no. You... Comment. Let's, I know you know. Let's, let's, I know you know. Let's actually get to the topic. And I'm pretty topic. sure I can find pics of that he's done this before. Okay. I'm going to look. Okay. You look. You, you spend <laughs> your time here at the office doing that. It's important work. Yeah. All right. Deposits and cancellation policies. Um, this is obviously important to, you got to have something set in your nail tech salon business, right? You don't have to. You'll just get walked on if you don't. Right. Well, it, assuming you want to have a, you know, a pretty stable business you've got to have things set yeah, up i mean you gotta have things in place you gotta have things in place and this is one of them yeah right so um this was interesting because we were talking about this downstairs before shooting and i had a lot of questions um i was like <laughs> you always have a lot of questions i know because i have a general curiosity about how things work and so the first thing i asked was like okay trace did you have a deposit cancellation policy you know obviously you had something but like what did you have in place um when you were doing nails in the salon so for me um, i had my cancellation policy in if you canceled within the 24 hours or you no showed then it was you paid for your you made you paid for that appointment you missed before you could get back on the books now again understanding that you know sometimes people get sick last of minute course. and I, i'm not you know, but you, I'm talking like those people that you know are going to abuse it. Right. Okay. Let's let's make this connection first. Obviously, cancellation policy and deposit, these go hand in hand, right? Definitely. Like Absolutely. You're taking a deposit in the event that somebody no shows or cancels. In in theory, this is the this is kind of the setup. Now, back in the day when you were doing nails, it's not like you're going to take deposits because that technology wasn't really it available. It really back wasn't then, right? available and, and it wasn't common uh, uh, for it. So now, yeah, I would have, a, it would be a credit card hold deposit. Yeah. They could just do it on the app and I wouldn't even have to think about it. And anything I do, hair, uh, uh, you yourself, skin, when you go in for when a I go in, I, even my, um, Pilates. Yeah. I miss and I get charged. You get charged. Even though I pay them a monthly fee on top of it. I get charged if I don't show up for class. Right. And so I like, you know, to some degree I can relate because my son and I, we go get a haircut and I like to book it online. And I like to, because when you have a kid, you want to make sure that time is reserved and you want to walk in, get it done and, and get, out, get out. Right. Yeah. So I do everything online. It's a 24 hour cancellation that I have. If I don't cancel, they charge me the full amount today. Right. So, so okay. I just wanted to make that connection. I know we're going off in like 30 directions. Let, let's just back up a little bit here. So back in the day, if if your policy was 24 hours to cancel, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. um, and if they did cancel, it was fine. Like if they canceled two days in advance. Yes and no. Okay, so this is, this this is, is why I'm asking. It's, it's very asking. interesting. It's yes and no because if I have someone that's continually canceling 24 hours, 48 hours before, and they're reserving that spot. It's a problem. That's a problem for me because I have a full clientele. It's not like, you know, every once in a while you can move people around and it's always the person in the middle of your day. It's never the last client, so you can't just go home. And so, yeah, that's a problem. It's 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 
please give me notice if something comes up. Right. But if you have done this, you know, several, several times in the last couple months, then we have to have a conversation. Right. So, so what we're talking about here really is cancellation policy is in place. Like if you're sick for the most part, right, you're going to know 24 hours in advance, like, Hey Trace, I'm not feeling well. I'm yeah. going to, I'm giving you notice. Like, sorry, I can't make it. Yeah. And, but then we move into the realm of not a good client, right? So if somebody is consistently yeah. a repeat doing this, offender. repeat offender, yeah. you're going to want to look for an opportunity yeah. to potentially replace them. Right? And I've had people like that. And I told them, basically, what I said is I no longer hold an appointment for you. If you want to call that day and see if I have an appointment, which I'm not going to because I'm going to replace them as a client. Right. But... We'll see if it works, but I can't hold, I can't reserve an appointment for you anymore. That's right. That's or, right. Or you have to pay ahead and you don't get that money back. Right. Okay. So, okay. That's, I think that's really important to make that distinction yeah. because people might think, okay, you have this 24 hour policy and as long as somebody cancels, like I just got to let them off the hook. If somebody's doing it consistently, you now have to ask the question, are they a good client? Yeah. And if they're not like, look, it's time to replace them with somebody else, correct? Yeah. And cool. It, what's funny is it always seems, and it would be interesting if anyone else can relate, it always was the clients that didn't, I'm not saying they didn't have anything going on, but they didn't work. The ones that work and are very busy and have, a, they are on scheduled. A schedule. They're scheduled. That's right. It's the it's the ones that just, you know, they're, they're like, oh, I'm off on the golf. Yeah. To, you know, and I'm doing that today. That almost makes sense to me because... If you don't have a schedule and then something can just pop up yeah. and you're like, I want to do that instead. Yeah. And then you do it. Yeah. Right. Whereas somebody that is busy, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, dude, there's no time. Like, I got to get this done. Yeah. I got to go. I've like, you're on a schedule. I got my nails this day. I got my hair yeah. this day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if somebody did miss, how would you, you take a full payment like, let's say they canceled 12 hours. Like, Tracy, I'm sorry. Something came up. I can't make it. And it wasn't like a, it was one of those things. Maybe they've done it a couple times and you're like, okay, look, I got to, I got to take, I got to charge her. How would you do that when they came to the next appointment? What would you do? I would, it wasn't the next appointment. Informed them at that time. You let them know right then. Right then. What like, would you say? Okay. You know, but this is like the third time that you've done this. So, um, be prepared when you come in, you will have to pay for two appointments. Okay. And that means they pay before I do the nails. Right. Because or, they're gonna, not going to, well, back in the day, it was all checks and stuff right, like right, that. Right. Like they're going to forget that they owed you and they're going to write that check. Oh, I'll catch it. No. Mm -mm. So be, when they sit down, it's like, okay, remember, you owe me for that appointment. You owe me for this appointment. And like, it's very interesting what you just said. Like, if it's the third appointment. So you're like, what I like about what you're saying, Tracy, is you're you would work with them. It's like, hey, you do it once, you do it again. Okay, now the now next time. Now you have time, my attention. Now you got my attention. Mm -hmm. Repeat offender. And so for sure the next time you're going to pay for the one that you missed yeah. and the one that you yeah. want. It was a three strikes rule on yeah. pretty much everything. Okay, I like that. I think that's a good, that gives, if somebody is having troubles like putting something in place, like this is a good sort of like thing to follow like yeah. what you had in place i think it's going to help people sort of like set some yeah. structure for themselves and again i'm very understanding especially now i, I you know with traveling things yeah. come up and it's like I, I i understand that but i also understand that that person has held that appointment for me so i get i get charged yeah for sure so today i think it's i would say a lot of salon professionals nails hair there is booking available online. Way more common. Way more common. And like myself, where I have a credit card, you put the credit card, they have my credit card information. Yep. So when I go to book. You log in to your, right? Correct. Yep. And then I can, I find the open slots. I can pick who I want, which is really cool, actually. And so today, it's almost something that nail professionals wouldn't have to think about. Right. right? For me... I love the apps for the whole deposit and things like that. I'm not a big fan and I'm 
again, a, very much a control freak. I don't like them scheduling their time because they don't know the difference between a fill, a backfill, right. a what art they're getting. So I like that control, but those are options. Those are all options. Some people have no problem with it. Um, some people are like, well, they can they can actually, you know, I book it for them, mm. but their their information still on file. So I like that. Yeah, because it, it's a nice blend between what you're talking about yeah. where. Everything is in the system, mm-hmm. but the nail pro understands the time it's going to take and yeah. he or she can then schedule the block of time. Right. Right. But Correct. then it's automated in the sense of if somebody is late, you can, they're going to get charged deposit. But, yeah. Yeah. So basically it's, it's kind of blending. And, and again, I know that there's people that they don't, they don't mind it, but I, I just really like to know that, you know, th- this is a 30 minute appointment. They're yeah. not taking an hour or not showing up for something that's supposed to take an hour and thinking they're getting it done in 30 minutes. Okay. So let's talk about this now. Deposits specifically. What is a reasonable deposit? Like if, if the system is going to like take a deposit to ensure that your spot is filled or would you say no deposit it's just going to charge you if you don't cancel within 24 hours, you're just going to get charged a full amount. What would you go with? full amount full amount okay and then leaving that up to me i can change that yeah you know what i mean okay i understand you were sick i i waived that don't don't stress totally but like uh where i go uh uh to get stuff done it's it's a full it's full i don't even think about it it's the same and then uh like i said the, the my exercise class well i pay a a monthly fee and then it's fifteen dollars every time I don't show up. Sure. Because I took the spot. Right. So even right, though I'm right, paying right. a lot per month, they don't care. Yeah. And I have no problem with that. But it's all very clear. I know this. You don't you can't leave things loose. Yeah. You have to be very clear on your policies. So probably the most important part of this this podcast right now is exactly what you said you can have every policy in place you have to communicate it effectively to your clients i think steph was saying um somebody was asking about you know deposits and and cancellation and she was struggling to communicate it to her client like how do i communicate this and the bottom line is look you just have to do it. Yeah. You know, you can you can communicate it nicely, you know. Don't you don't like don't be tentative, take, just take explain it nicely. The emotion out of it. Take the emotion out of it. And that that's hard to do, but once you do that like literally what I what I do when I have to do stuff like this, I go, "Okay, I'm writing this for Habib." Because when you do it for a friend, yeah. Or, you know, or I'm doing it for staff. When you do it for someone else, you're like, you're like, oh, no, this is this is how it's going to be. But when you do it for for yourself, that's good. All of a sudden you have these emotions tied into it. It's a little softer delivery, right? Yeah. But maybe to the point. To the point and factual. And like, you're like, okay, this is good for you. But for some reason, it's not good for myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Take yourself out of it. And I just recently saw on our community, someone was asking about uh, people to post their policies. Mm. So a bunch of people were posting their policies in there. I so, like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. I think that's a good idea just to give Steal it exposure. One. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a good idea. One thing I do want to say before we wrap this up is communicating these policies, payment, cancellation, it's it's not an easy topic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's the thing. Like you have to force yourself to do it and it may not come out perfectly the first time. Don't worry. Like... I always remember the first time I tried to collect money from from our customers, and might I, I was, have my money, dude. <laughs> I, I was might I have my Please. money? Please, yeah, I was. I was super tentative. I was like, like very like, um, yeah, I think you owe us. And they were just like, whatever, dude. Click, you know. <laughs> it took me time to develop yeah. that voice, you know, and that ability to communicate. So it takes it can take practice. You might be a natural. I wasn't. It took me practice to develop that. So don't worry about it, you know, but you do have to force yourself to do it. Even if you have anxiety or you feel weird about it, you got to let it rip. And I think that's going to help in the end. That communication, making sure your clients understand um, your business is everything. So let us know in the comments below. um, How do you deal with deposits? Do you take deposits? Do you do full payment? Share the policies. Share your policies. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. In the comments below, share your policies so other 
uh, nail techs can learn and see what you do. Steal them. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Let's share. Let's share. Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate having you here today. And we'll see you. (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) And uh, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Biz Talk.